it is early in the morning. It is earlier than most stores open, but there is a store right by the freeway in Post Falls, Idaho. Treasure Trove occupies this end of this building next to this freeway exit. And not very many antique stores get to be right by a freeway with that kind of visibility. It definitely brings lots of people through, which means they can sell all sorts of different stuff. So we're gonna see. It advertises itself as a flea market and specialty shops. I've been here once a few years ago, and there's somebody else here who might be familiar to you. Here is somebody who you may not have seen before, but you've talked to her. This is Corinne Kay, and you have a booth here. It is so I good do. to see you. I'm so excited. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. This is yeah. really fun. And uh, why don't you show me where you are and then show me around the store? Okay, I will do. Come on over. Awesome. Very good. So you've got the showcase and the shelf unit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Both of them side by side. Oh my gosh. Now this is a Lennox piece here, isn't it? Yes. With all the little houses. I have this and I have never taken it out of the boxes. It's a lot cuter than I realized. Yeah, I was surprised how uh, much they go for too. Oh, that's cool. Get, you got a lot of fun stuff here. I like the pink tumble up because um, I started using a tumble up because I had a cat and he would get into the water in the middle of the night and it would just drive me crazy. And after he knocked it on my head once, I decided that a covered glass was a better idea. So I'm a big fan. A little better vintage. I have a lot of Indian. Um, oh, cover. yes. I love blue sky, so I do a lot of blue sky oh, stuff. Oh, I think blue sky is really interesting. And this it's little to husband it catcher is from Spokane, Washington. It has it right on there. Oh, that's so funny. And what well, you're supposed to beat him with the rolling pin until he says sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit small for that. <laughs> anyway. I like the uh, silver pin with the flowers. That looks like maybe a Dane craft or one of those. Yeah, I don't know. And All I know is it's Mark Sterling, and so it's vintage. That's uh, great. Obviously. And I like this deco pen. And guess where I got that? Oh, I don't know. That's beautiful. I like the shape. Yeah. And all the marcasites, and that looks like a 30s, 40s mm -hmm. era. Mm -hmm. Gosh, where'd you get it? At our favorite antique store in St. Regis. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Oh, I love that store. And you know they're cheap on the jewelry there. I know. That's why I've been picking it up. Mm -hmm. I and then I see some very pretty pieces of Fenton in the blue hand-blown lamp signed wow i see so this is pretty piece of studio glass and it's got a signature g i think that's gibson i'm pretty sure that's gibson but then we've got this signature here for the artist who worked for them and 1904 this seems like a really great piece for the price and it's a little lamp they started to do those instead of just paperweights and that was about the time oh that's really cool Gosh, that seems like a good price. I think I might have to take that. Diamond optic. Yes. Oh, that's, that's neat. That's a hard one to find. It is a hard one to find. And I've never owned that piece in Fenton, actually. And it, it's very interesting feeling. It's very tactile mm -hmm. because it's ribbed all the way down. So when you run your finger along it, you really get that feel. I like this piece, too. This is Italian Murano. But what an interesting bunch of swirled colors in here. This is really exciting for me because um, Corinne started as a viewer, was working through her mother's estate and decided that she wanted to become a reseller. And she has shown at the Custer show a couple of times. She's got the space here and she's really picked up on things pretty fast. We've got this cute little Pekingese. That's a Beswick piece, some more Fenton pieces. She's actually given me some really good modernist pieces to try to sell that wouldn't sell in this location. This is a great McCoy piece, this clustered floral, and you see the McCoy mark on the bottom. So there's a lot of fun stuff here. And I think even a thing or two for me. Cute little apartment size apron by Fenton. Okay, so here, oh yeah. See how it's glowing in there? Oh, Get it wow. further back. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, I mean the base. I'm so surprised by that. That's really interesting to know. Especially it goes neon. Blue. I know, and I that turns have pink. With that. Oh, that's so interesting. So, Something else to add to a black light case. That's really good to know. That absolutely is in Poli, the, the jar on the left here. And I like the jars. And I actually, you keep finding cased pieces where it's not the clear color. And I have to say, I think that uh, I personally prefer that. And especially in Poli because it makes it thicker and it's such a thin glass otherwise. So to me, it's better quality when it's cased. Well, this place looks a lot different than it did when I was here last. First of all, there's a lot more vintage. Secondly, there's this whole space that is comic books and they have a whole bunch. They've got a lot of superhero. They have a lot 
of Incredible Hulk. They have the first real Ghostbusters. Looking for low numbers, of course, is where you're going to find the highest value, and so that's why you see a lot of that in this case here. Newsstand variant. Uh, the serious comic collectors, especially the people who are collecting more recent things like Spawn, are looking for things that are variants, and a newsstand variant means it was just done to be sold and the newsstand and it wasn't meant to be sent out to subscribers so there's some differences if you see something you like they might be able to get it to you it, so it is a pastel it is a pastel oh that's great and mm -hmm. this is a spokane area mm -hmm. artist you were able to research it mm -hmm. oh that's cool well she really did She's... like local artists so that makes a lot of sense to me did you find any background on this person i did you can look them up online but even on the back here oh kathy hudson I never looked at the back. We were so busy preparing for oh, the estate. You know, sometimes, I mean, and that's a good reason to go to estate sales, especially when there's so much in one. John Deere, of course, is really popular, and Ertl made a lot of these in Iowa, and then everything went offshore. So people are looking for the ones that are marked made in the USA, primarily, at least the serious collectors are. They have some other fun things here. This whole shelf of birds, all of those little flower frogs, are Czechoslovakian and they're only asking $14 a piece which is a little less than I get. I usually get closer to 20 for these. Oftentimes they have the made in Czechoslovakia mark but not always and sometimes you will see them in luster wear. This one is made in Japan. Usually the luster ones are Japanese. Ooh, the dealer sign for Lennox China. Now Lennox is not as collected as it used to be but they really do make nice stuff and I like dealer signs and that's only $15 and I have a feeling someone who does collect Lennox China will like these. I always look at dealer signs because of course there's about one dealer sign for every thousand pieces that are made because you figure an average dealer might have a thousand pieces in stock. So these are harder to find. And then glass, a lot of blue opalescent, especially this nice berry bowl set here. This is Jefferson's iris pattern. Iris and Neander, actually, from about 1902, I believe is when this came out. Jefferson Glass did a big raid bottom, so don't think everything that has that bottom is heisey, it's not. But this is a really pretty color, and I love the opalescent and a good pattern. And you see it is the whole berry bowl set because it's got the master bowl and the little berry bowls to go with it. You would serve the big bunch of berries in here with the spoon, and then people would scoop and put in their own little bowls so that they weren't putting their spoon right into this stuff with everyone else. Jefferson and Northwood glass here. This is another Jefferson piece. A lot of the Jefferson molds were bought by Northwood and other companies. So for example, this one is the Aurora Borealis. Little vase here. This one is Jefferson's version of Tokyo in the compote here, but Northwood also made a version. A lot of King's Crown thumbprint. I remember going into the S&H stamp store with my mom and they had all of this stuff and Fenton milk glass together. And I remember thinking it was so pretty and I wanted her to buy it and she bought a bathroom scale instead. I was so disappointed. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this is unusual, I think, with the windmill, isn't it? Well, it's it's actually not a rare piece because they oh. made more of them later. And I think this one is actually and a later. later because yeah, because it's clear, there, it's clear mm -hmm. on the bottom. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and but it is a neat piece, and this one actually is the, um, it says it's Fenton Panther. Ah, that's because I have the Panther upside down. It's only $10, and I have to say, I'm sure that, you know, it's just a small-footed bull, but I have not seen the Panther before, and so I'm intrigued enough to get that just to have something new and see if I might be able to get $20 for it. So I think I'm going to take that. So it turns out they have two of the Panther pieces, and... I asked Corinne which one she thought was better, and which one did you pick? This one here. Uh-huh, and why is that? Because the image is a lot more detailed. Mm -hmm. and It's crisper. Um, and it, it is crisper, and it, just the sheen on it is a little bit more uh, it, older There's more appearing sheen. to me. This yeah. one probably got washed or just wasn't as high a, uh, as much of metallic oxide when they did it. And I'm with you. I want that one. Okay. Thank you. Really pretty bohemian yeah. glass pieces here, including one bottle from a caster set. I would love to have a whole caster set full of this sort of thing to contrast with that silver plate. Uh-oh. Oh, we're in trouble now. Oh, church, you gotta wear this one. There we go. Now we're getting yeah. that plume. Wow. <laughs> 
somebody had a lot of fun with this and it's a little too fun for me that's cool with the legs over there i have scissors oh, that the that lady is really hard to find and especially with the stripes yeah the mm -hmm. lady scissors mm -hmm. all of those with the legs that spread well we have found the owner of this piece and you said you got this locally yes it was in spokane at an estate wow that is really neat did they know what they had no oh my goodness that's fantastic. It's such a hard piece to find. Had you ever owned one before? No, in fact, I'd never even seen one before. She said she did some research and this is circa 1894, which seems consistent with what I've seen of these. It's just a great piece. And the first time that any of us have ever seen one, which is neat. And then she's got a bunch of really nice jewelry caskets. She has a lot of larger buttons here, including some figurals. I like this one particularly with little red riding hood. This looks like it's 1890 approximately. And that is the kind of thing that people like in buttons. They like scenics. They like things that have, uh, here's a really neat one with Ariel. Isn't that beautiful? And you know, these are priced 25 and $30 a piece. And for a serious button collector, that's not bad at all. And she's also got some really great straight razors here, including the one in the middle. It's so nice she opened the case and that we can actually uh, pick things up. Look at the fox running on that. Isn't that neat? Uh, it looks to me like it's celluloid. It almost looks like gutta percha, but it, it, I don't think it's horn. Let's hold it to our cheek. Yeah, it does not feel uh, cold, so I believe it is celluloid. It's a great piece, though. And she has that one priced at 50 This one with the interesting modeled handle in the celluloid is 40 and this is the sort of thing that straight razor fans are really looking for we see a lot of the utility ones like this but when you start getting interesting designs on them that's where they really go up in value she's got lots of great shaving brushes i like the holder on this particular one and only 15 dollars for the bakelite brush and holder that actually seems like a, oh i see the brushes uh, priced separately only at 10 and the holder at 15 those are actually pretty reasonable prices in fact, in general, I have to say the prices so far here are really, really very good. And she's got a whole bunch of other interesting shaving things. There's people who collect the uh, razor sharpeners. And this is a Rolls razor. This is a self-containing auto strop. So some really cool stuff. And then the purses. Boy, she has some really nice ones. And I'm going to get on the other side where we... Well, no, I'm going to pick this one up and just show you. This one is priced at 65 Now, it's got a little bit of looseness at the hinges from wear which often happens but it is a really sweet little piece this appears to be a mandalian mandalian did not survive as long as whiting and davis but they made equally beautiful things and at 65 dollars, this is a great piece to put on a wall as a display you could gently use it on occasion but it's just really sweet to look at i think i'd been in here once and yeah it wasn't as heavy in vintage so you're the new owner yeah Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I'm glad to hear there's more vintage here now. That's She's great. She's focused on vintage and artisans. Cool. Which, of course, me being the artist type. That's a great combination. That's a yes. great combination. I particularly like the handles on this. Again, very simple and straightforward. This is her filla. And this one would have been imported. Usually they imported from Germany or from Czechoslovakia. It was Ebling and Russ of Philadelphia. So an American label but the pieces were made elsewhere. And $20 is a good price on that. Boy, people are really into minerals now, they aren't really they? They are. And Locally I have a quartz. mineral collection, believe it or not. But Do you? Yeah, because I was a jeweler for, oh, of a jewelry store for 20 years, so I love minerals. Now, I have to say, this repurposing of an old cow skull with all the jeweling on it, I mean, it's so amazing to me what people think to do. And actually, I think that looks really crazy interesting. And it's $55 after all that bedazzling. That's a lot of work for somebody to do for not a whole lot more than you'd pay for a regular skull. That is neat. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. So this is a new vendor. Wow. And what a neat display. I like that they really built a little vignette. They made a room for themselves. That's very impressive. And this is a neat old scale, too, actually. $81 is not a bad price for a 40-pound hanging scale these days. It looks like it's from about 1920 or 30. Yeah, this is a cute booth the way it came out. Yeah, really cool. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I will try not to stare at you with the camera too much, but you have a lovely, lovely spot here. Thank you. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this, is, this is new to me. Oh, yes. that's great. Yes. I've always liked to do 
sales and I've always loved antiques. Mm -hmm. and, um, I've kind of inherited some stuff. And start with that and then... And I'm not, I'm not real knowledgeable about a whole bunch of things, but I do kind of look at it and kind of know, oh, that's old. Yeah. You know, some just, old things often do just sort of have a feel. And I yes, mean, the yeah. truth is, is that we've all been around long enough ourselves now to kind of recognize at least some things, right? And then you just build your knowledge from there. Kanawa, this bulbous, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kanawa did this in, um, oh gosh, the early 70s. I kind of like it, actually. Yeah, I do too. Oh, I just sold mine of this. And 2850 is just about what I got for mine as well. This is coal port. It was a limited edition. I think that it was something that you got when you bought some sort of a, a liquor at one point. But Coalport was a very good English company. This orange piece that she was holding, of course, is a Fenton piece. And what's nice about this is that it is Amberina, but it shades a lot to the orange and just a little bit of yellow. So it's a little different shading than a lot of Fenton pieces. And I just like that one. She has $30 on that. Yeah, it's great to see the vintage coming in here. There's actually quite a lot. And when I was here before, there really wasn't. Yeah, so it was, garage sale. it was a lot of just sort of garage sale, leftover -y things. That's so why I struggled because I had to really learn the difference between a flea market and, and a vintage market or and, and then, you know, of course, the antique I knew. But right. Yeah, no, it is. It is interesting because, yeah, flea market means different things in different places. I go to some places where a flea market is a downright antique show. And I go to some places where a flea market is literally like, what did I get out of the garage this morning and throw in the car? Here, this is that. very pretty. Oh, are you sure? Oh, well, yeah, thank you. you. It's thirty dollars. It's work. pot metal, and it's just a really pretty piece. And I like ink wells. And they obviously didn't want the top to fly off, so they've guarded it very well for us. Hinge is broken. That's right. oh yes, I see. Hinges can be hard. Once in a while, you can find a rod that will go through if the back part hasn't been broken. But this one, probably not much you can do. But she's such a great face. I still think for thirty-five dollars, she's well priced chest of drawers is just different look at the shaping to it i mean they obviously wanted something that would stand out in a room this looks like it's 19 probably 30s i'm guessing because this is a printed rather than carved design here and so we're starting to try to save money because it's recession time and oh yeah would you open that up that'd be great i'm curious to see if they're just regular drawers okay so no fittings but you can see it's all dovetailed and that's machine done. But still, this is this is a nice looking piece and it's 375. It's just something different. It looks almost more like a radio cabinet than a dresser, which I like about it. I like the pink and I especially like seeing that they have one of the reflectors on it so that you actually can see what those were used for. It was actually to help reflect the light down. Oh, that's pretty. Oh my gosh, that's really beautiful. I doubt that it has any mark, does it? Mm -mm, I can't find any. Yeah, it's probably not marked because it looks like something that would have been made in about the 1880s or 90s. And it looks like it's French or Austrian. Is there something on this little red tag? No. $90. Oh, okay. Just the price. But it looks like the it base is not... It's been fixed. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad. And they painted it but it's it's interesting that that got broken because the rest of it seems like the thing that would break and it's so top heavy but it's a beautiful piece i mean look at the caryatids on the side there with the wings they've got an old cheese dome here 49 dollars. these used to sell for a lot more and i think they're kind of neat looking let's see if this one is old and original which i think it is yes lots of crack allure i think they just have this plastic here so nobody sets the lid down hard they actually have a lot of neat turn of the last century porcelains for some reason monks were a very very popular motif around 1910 and this guy is having his dinner the bowl is 50 dollars. this was probably made in europe i'm not sure exactly where and then i just dawned on me that all of this is on top of this patterned round for mica table you don't see a lot of patterning and you don't see round and it's 90 dollars, which seems pretty cheap for four mica these days Listen, I wanted to show you if I can find it in there. It's from Wallace. 
Oh, interesting. Wow. Oh, that's that's very interesting. Yes, Wallace, Idaho was a big silver mining town and until 1982 it was they were still mining a lot of silver and yes, the hotels were primarily um occupied by ladies. They didn't actually need the lamp post. Hmm. That is very interesting and a strange piece of local history actually. A lucite clock I see here too. I always like lucite. And this one is the Telecron. It's kind of a classic. $45 is about the right price on that if it works. I love this little oak table. That's just so sweet with the, you see the big pith rays or tiger rays, sometimes people call them. And that tells you it's American from about 1900 because the trees they were cutting were old growth. And so they had that in them. And by this time, the English had cut all of theirs. And so you don't see that sort of uh, ray in the furniture. Very pretty piece, and that one's priced at 150, which I can understand because it's two tiers and it's a little more elaborate in terms of the design. You know, this this shows you that you can take a store that's been mainly a flea market and you can upgrade, you can move into antiques and vintage. $30 for the end of the trail set. There's a neat Welsh dresser. I always like those with the big open hutch and that way you don't have cabinets, but all your stuff is just sitting there where you can just reach up and get it. And they've got some pretty cool stuff like these lotus plates in the fire king jadeite they're asking 130 for the set of six which is about the right price these are interesting because they have sort of a shape like a mollusk so you would almost say oyster plates but i guess they're more for general seafood and there is the mark weimar from germany oh interesting so the that lucite. Like is yeah. lucite the lucite grapes are glowing it's so interesting to see that because it's colors we wouldn't necessarily think of. I like the Fairbanks scale. It's been repainted, but I always like the way they say Fairbanks up the side. And they were clever in that they had the weights here so that you wouldn't lose them too easily because you need that to make it work. This space has some fun stuff. I like this hand carved. He almost looks like chainsaw art from the 1970s and he is priced at 189 Because of the big heavy coat, he does look like someone who would go down into the mines in the hat. Yep, yep, that makes sense. $15 on this. This is another one of these scenic candy boxes. This one's is pretty worn and it looks like they've got some of their stuff in it, so I won't get into it too much, but I was trying to see what the scene is. These were very popular in the late 20s. I've seen them from upstate New York. I've seen them from Pennsylvania. And I've seen them with palm trees. Lots of creels and horn mounts and things that you would expect in this area because we are getting into the mountains here. This is a neat uh, folding bench. This is where you would open it up and put your two big galvanized buckets on. And then you would also, if you had the money, attach a ringer to this and then you could squeeze the stuff out of your clothes. But that was your one side for washing, one side for rinsing. You know, you can decorate a whole house with neat older art for not a whole lot of money, especially if you're not hung up about having everything in frames. And it looks like they've expanded too. There's a couple of new spaces in the back here. This one's mainly doing boutique items. This one has some more Majolica. We're in a place that's old enough that you will see Majolica because Spokane's first boom was in the 1890s. And so this was still popular at the time. And these are nice old pieces and they're priced pretty well. This one's only 45 with the flowers on it. That's more likely to be an English piece. And there's that one, also 45. I like the big picture here in particular. And they said it's got some small chips and they only have 45 on that too. So I have to say all of these prices are really very good for what they are. The debate on there's a debate on which vase, whether it's uh, old or new. Let's take a look. Ah, lilies and frogs, yes. This is a lot of fun. The glaze is a majolica type glaze. And yes, you're right, this is new. Um, and there's certain ways you can tell, but a lot of it has to do, I mean, it's got the blotchiness of majolica, but then you start getting into this crystalline glaze and that is not a majolica effect at all. And then also you look at the bottom, look how it's finished, look how there's nowhere and these little felt things over time would have worn down. So yeah, this is definitely a newer piece. Nice looking, I mean, it's got a lot of design. Oh, a little phone bench or down south, they refer to these as gossip benches because I guess you'd sit on the phone and gossip. Had you heard that term before? Yeah, I just recently, a viewer said, oh yeah, we call them gossip benches down here. He's in Tennessee and I just thought that was great. 
Lots of little uh, things here. This is Royal Sealy. This is a Japanese company, but you'll see that name sometimes. And this is a little wine set, actually. Capri by Royal Sealy of Japan, 1960s. And there's a nice piece under here. There's an entire line of this. It's Hall's Blue Rose. When you see this gold mark with the box, at the time, Hall considered this a little bit higher quality or a more expensive line when they put this mark on it. And this is, they called it Rose Parade, but we call it Blue Rose these days because they did do a white version of it as well. You said toys are your specialty. Yes, I do the superhero on the back shelf. Oh, I like the citrus knife. These were done because they, uh, you know, the citrus tomatoes, and this was because the knives back then, before they had stainless, would pit from the juice in the citrus. And so they came up with these knives in the 30s where you use that instead so it wouldn't mess it up. And I'm sorry, you said you were, uh, oh, a lot of superheroes and things. I'll bet this does really well. This seems like the direction that the market's going for a lot of younger collectibles, or I mean, a lot of younger collectors. And also, I'm so quite a few to older men. <laughs> older men, really? Interesting. Interesting. That is good to hear. You know, I mean, I keep forgetting my generation is like the video game generation, and these heroes are actually our heroes. You've got cups and saucers and jewelry. Ooh. Oh, that's really pretty. So that's the coral piece you were talking about. That's real. Sponge coral. Oh. That's Beautiful very pretty. Tea. Boy, sponge coral. I think all this coral jewelry, it's the time to get it now because with what's happening with coral, I, I think they're going to start more and more restrictions on. putting sanctions, especially in Hawaii, because that's where my husband's from. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're putting restrictions on uh, harvesting. Oh, yes, yeah. Especially the black coral. Especially black, yeah. I know in Florida they're saying that they're having so much bleaching that they're actually taking samples and growing them in aquariums because they're afraid it's going to die. Thank you very much. I'm curious about this one because this just looks like it would lay well. And it's not a bell. Yeah, it's not by anybody, but it's just a good look. I mean, it'd look better on you than it would me. But <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's got motion and stuff. I think I'd like to have that, please. Okay, I'm going to go put it up with Gloria. Thank you. On the holding thing. So. Oh, that's great. I've got a bunch of stuff up there already. He's got a so. Pile already. And yeah, okay. I've been making a pile. Awesome. Wow, this coral is really beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? And it's sponge coral. Look at this. So is, yes. is, is it sponge because of this um, sort spots. of mottled effect? The spots, yeah. yeah. This is a piece of cool rock. People think that they mainly just made trays, which is true, but they did do ice buckets and a few other things. And this particular one from about 1980, of course, you can tell because it's got letters and words. That's the first time that was popular, kind of like it is now. And this says drink on it if you look at it. And this one is priced at $25, which is actually a pretty good deal. It's a little corroded here though. And there's not a lot you can do about that, so you just have to live with it the way it is. But you don't see them very often. Uh, which one? The, the one in amber. the middle, the amber. No, but actually, it's a good piece. Let's take a look. And it does have a connection to Blanco, so you're on the right track. Okay. It's actually colony glass, and it is a line called Antigua, and it was by Wayne Husted, who was the... Uh, Blanco designer until 1963. Well, this is the first thing he did after he left Blanco. This is the very first design he made. And people are starting to collect, uh, catch on to it. And it is hand done. Um, this is a pontal, so it is hand blown, even though it's done into a mold, which is similar to what he was doing at Blanco. And actually, I think that's a pretty good price now. People are catching on to this. And that's a nice honey amber. So I actually think that's a pretty good deal. There's the Poppy Trail set, and this is only $25.49. It's amazing how cheap some of this dinnerware is now. This is Sculpted Daisy by Metlocks, and it's a great pattern. This is all raised and then hand-painted. This came out, I think, around 1963, and this has the ink stamp, but you don't see the Metlock stamp. When you do see it, it's usually on the bigger pieces of the plates, if at all. Sometimes they mark things, sometimes they didn't. There we go. 
Sculptured Daisy Poppy Trail. Yeah, this is a fantastic price if you just wanted to get started. And the nice thing is that it's mostly white where you're eating. People get freaked out about lead glazes and things, and it's usually the really hot colors that you have to be really careful of, like if it's all orange or yellow and it's an older piece, you would want to check for lead. But the white glazes are not something to be terribly concerned about. Now, people are always thinking that this is treasure craft, but it isn't. This is Sequoia Ware by um, American Bisque. And the reason that we know this is the brown is very even. They would do a texture to make it look like it had different color, but it's actually all one shade of brown. Whereas the treasure craft was, uh, it would darken and lighten and be a little less even. Uh, and so this strawberry salad bowl set, strawberries are big in the 70s, $20. I mean, again, these prices are great if it's something you like and can use. This is fun because it actually has words on it. This is Fire King. I've never seen this one before. It says Bon Appetit all over the lid. That's kind of neat. Um, you better make sure your casserole came out really well before you put that on the table, right? <laughs> It's definitely a lot more interesting than the last time I came here, and this is a good lesson for me. A lot of times, once I've been to a place, I form an opinion about it, and I figure that if it was a certain way, then that's the way it's going to be. And I had actually formed the opinion that this place was more flea markety, and that maybe I'd find a bargain, but I wasn't going to see a lot of old stuff. Well, uh, today has been a revelation. So, you know, sometimes we get in our ruts and it's good to go outside of that, go back to a place that you haven't seen for a while and just see what's going on because things do change in this business and this place has changed for the better. That is a nice piece of Hager actually. 75 is probably a little on the high side because I have it in silver and I've been trying to sell it for 60 and haven't had any luck yet. To me, Hager is interesting because people are catching on to it. So I'm seeing the prices are kind of fluctuating, like no one's quite sure where things should be yet because there's new interest in the market. So some of it, you just have to keep following and, and see how it shakes out. This is priced at 110. It's got the original label and it shows the handler's marks. This is really cool. Heidi at um, Rosie's uh, auction house was telling me about this. So all of the baskets towards the end of production, they would have a certain tool that they would use. And that is the pattern that you see there. And so based on this, you can tell who put the handle on because there were people that was their specialty. All they did was attach handles. Oh, Butch there we right. go. Butch right. Okay, very good. Oh, that's cool. Yes. So yeah, she was the one that told me, oh yeah, you can tell who put the handle on by if you have this guide. So now we have the guide. That's great. And I do like this twist piece because it goes from the green to the red, like a Rubina Verde in the old Victorian days. Aha. Yes, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Not really a glow to this one. And that doesn't necessarily surprise me. A lot of the Murano pieces don't necessarily have that. This is neat. These were done by Ronson in the 1930s, and they are a cigarette case with the lighter built in. They cost $10 when they were new, which was a lot of money in 1936 and 7. Uh, they are $55 here, which is a fair price. Uh, the one thing is that most people did have a monogram done because it was a special gift. A lot of people now wish that they hadn't had the monograms, so if you can find them unmonogrammed, even better. Only $17 on this parts watch. Pocket watches have really gotten inexpensive. If you like pocket watches, it's a great time to collect. Almost every family kept one or more from an ancestor and now we're in an era where people don't really use them so the prices have come down but they're just as neat as they always were these barber bottles down here we've got for witch hazel in the clam broth clam broth is this it's like a milk glass but notice how it's really thin and watery and it looks like clam juice that's that's why clam broth and it's got the original porcelain stopper those are often missing so that's nice and then this is something that's very collectible if you happen to run into these. These are little uh, Fury engines and they would have used these for uh, model planes in the 1960s. K&B was a good company. 165 in perfect shape in the original box with everything is about the right price on this one. Um, there's three of us and we were just doing eclectic. This is yeah. neat. This is all new, but this is uh, someone locally making these. Mm -hmm. And it's genuine leaf creations. I don't know exactly how they're doing this. I mean, I guess I see there are, 
they're using actual, actual leaves, leaves and molding and, and then and decoupage kind of oh i see oh that's neat Little decoupage this is something i really haven't seen before they have a bunch of knife rests this is so that you wouldn't get stuff from your knife on the table so in a fine house you would expect knife rests and they're fun to collect because there's all sorts of different varieties and they've been making them for gosh well over a century some pretty earlier pieces down here these two jack in the pulpit vases are uh, late victorian early 20th century and then this little piece here the art glass bowl this would have originally had a spoon that came out of the top and this has an iridescence that makes me think it might be connected to the lotes company or other bohemian glass makers around 1900. look at the double pie bird down there that's something a little bit different we see single ones but yes. the double and these little pieces here are place card holders they look like little bouquets see They're the two checked. little rings that come up yeah these are czechoslovakian from the 1930s when you clip your card right in there it's just yeah i love the really really tiny miniatures that are smaller than a demitasse size i do too but and i was curious to see the double bird Hi, um, Vent. We're making you do all this work. No, 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 no. You. Hey, it's all about learning. It is. Yeah, no. I that is really cute. Isn't that cute? Now, these little lockets are these, okay. they're small for match saves. What would they well, be for? This is a stamp. Oh, I see. Oh, that's right. That makes okay. sense. Then, Ah, okay, it's that match. is a match striker because yep. it's got the... When it's got the striker. It's got it's the striker at the bottom, yeah. And they'll be the same that. sizes on them, but when you see the striker, then somebody says, you know, I want a stamp safe, so I know. So see, this is a stamp. It does not have a striker. No striker. That was just to keep a few stamps in, yeah. Yep. And are these silver? Yes. Or are they just yep. plain? They're sterling. They're sterling. Yep. Yeah, they're wonderful little things. I, I'm more and more, I think, because as I go on in life, I have so much in my collections that mm, small is beautiful because yeah. I can fit it. Oh, that's really neat. And then yeah. this one's a match safe because I see the striker yeah. on it on the bottom. Yeah, this is just a little bigger is all. Oh, how neat. What a great comparison. Well, so that you and can see, tell the and difference. it also, you know, you see when it could have been on a Chatelaine. Right. Because Absolutely. Because when you have these on there, they very likely could have been yeah. on a Chatelaine. And this one too. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you, Marie. That was really interesting. Lots of fun little sewing implements here, too. Little needle cases, little holders, pin cushions. I think that this is the sweet grass basket. Oh, I do, too. Absolutely. You know, and I have $20 on it. That's a great price. And how neat with the little... Yeah. Uh, now, this is... Uh, I have this cushion. in my sewing, and that would be out of the 50s. Right. But the basket yeah. was, you know... It's and very cool. I like the darning eggs. I especially like this end of day darning egg. That's different. Oh, a glove darner. Yes, with the double end because you could put it in the finger and sew over it. There, you have two of them in sterling, and I noticed they okay, have. Those are an all. It is an all. Yes. Okay. And so then, it's so they can adjust how 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 big deep to, the, to make the hole the hole goes because right. Then, you know, when they crocheted or embroidered around, a, not embroidered, but crocheted or tatted around a hanky or a tablecloth and they could poke the hole so that then their crochet hook could go in it. Fantastic. Thank you. That's wonderful and great information and really cool stuff. Oh, and what a cute little biscuit barrel this is down here yeah. with that very fancy handle from England from about 1910. And look at the great design on there. I wonder if it says which company made this. This one's priced at 150. It's one of the finer looking ones I've seen. And there is our maker name, Crown Devon. That makes sense. Crown Devon did a lot of nice stuff and is a little bit underrated in my opinion. So that's a really neat piece. Glad that uh, Corinne pointed this out and Murray because this is a good side-by-side -side comparison. So this is earlier, this is cushion, this pattern. And you can see why, because it's tucked like cushions would be on a sofa, for example. But this one in the satin is older and then they redid them later in milk glass. Painted, like I said, and painted woods. usually and with ivy. Look at that beautiful blue. I'm used to seeing this in green, that Czech perfume with yeah. the texturing. See, I had the the uh, powder jar that just sold. That went I with just, it and yeah, that sold. Brought, well, actually, it was a different pattern, but I love the people on that. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're really great. You usually just see the flowers and the cherubs really make it. Yeah, that's sterling. There we go. Yeah, this is neat. Yeah, this was something that would have been a, uh, a gentleman might have worn. You stick your cigarillo in here and chop, and yep. then you could chop off the end yep. and smoke away because they were rolling their own back then. Yeah. This is a neat set of stereo cards with the it's viewer, it and it's 200 for the set because it's Keystone, but it is all about... The, set, the First World War, and it talks about all the battles and shows yeah. everything. It is as close to an actual experience of being there as you can get these days, and that's part of what's interesting to people about these. Yeah. This is essentially the equivalent of uh, television and radio before they had such things. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. Thank you for inviting me. I would not have known that this store has really turned around and is a good antique store. And we helped uh, one of your uh, friends identify a couple of uh, Paragon cups and saucers that are worth a hundred so and a special. half a piece. So we've had a great morning. I bought some cool stuff. And now we're going to eat at the most garlicky restaurant there is on earth, and it is so good. He may still smell like garlic, Heidi, when you see him. <laughs> That's possible. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the place. This is the White House Grill in Post Falls, Idaho. It is a wonderful restaurant, and everybody I know from Seattle who comes over to do the antique show ends up coming here for dinner at least once. They load the garlic on everything, but it tastes so good. Everything is still flavorful beyond that and you cannot get out of here without stinking heavily of garlic so i should be a real joy to be around at my next stop wherever that may be follow along with me and you'll see as i drive east where i find more interesting antiques and vintage and in the meantime if you enjoyed this video check out this one also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our patreon our memberships we've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content also please do check out our website theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help and we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon bye for now